In electronics, a varicap diode, varactor diode, variable capacitance diode, variable reactance diode or tuning diode is a type of diode designed to exploit the voltage-dependent capacitance of a reversed biased PN junction. Applications Varactors are used as voltage-controlled capacitors. They are commonly used in voltage-controlled oscillators, parametric amplifiers, and frequency multipliers. Voltage-controlled oscillators have many applications such as frequency modulation for FM transmitters and phase-locked loops. Phase-locked loops are used for the frequency synthesizers that tune many radios, television sets, and cellular telephones. The Varicap was developed by the Pacific Semiconductor subsidiary of the Ramo Waldridge Corporation, who received a patent for the device in June 1961. The device name was also trademarked as the Firicap by TRW Semiconductors, the successor to Pacific Semiconductors, in October 1967. This helps explain the different names for the device as it came into use. Operation Varactors are operated in a reverse biased state. No current flows, but since the thickness of the depletion zone varies with the applied bias voltage, the capacitance of the diode can be made to vary. Generally, the depletion region thickness is proportional to the square root of the applied voltage. Capacitance is inversely proportional to the depletion region thickness. Thus, the capacitance is inversely proportional to the square root of applied voltage. All diodes exhibit this phenomenon to some degree, but for actor diodes are manufactured specifically to exploit this effect and increase the capacitance, whereas most ordinary diode fabrication strives to minimize the capacitance. The figure shows an example of a cross-section of a varactor with the depletion layer formed of a PN junction. This depletion layer can also be made of a MOS or a Schottky diode. This is very important in CMOS and MMIC technology. Use in a circuit. Tuning circuits Generally the use of a varicap diode in a circuit requires connecting it to a tuned circuit usually in parallel with any existing capacitance or inductance. Because of DC voltage must be applied reverse bias across the varicap to alter its capacitance, this must be blocked from entering the tuned circuit. This is accomplished by placing a DC blocking capacitor with a capacitance about 100 times greater than the maximum capacitance of the varicap diode, in series with it and applying the DC from a high impedance source to the node between the varicap cathode and the blocking capacitor as shown in the upper left-hand diagram. Right. Since no significant DC current flows in the varicap, the value of the resistor connecting its cathode back to the DC control voltage can be somewhere in the range of 22 kilo ohms to 150 kilo ohms and the blocking capacitor somewhere in the range of 5 to 100 nanofarads. Sometimes, with very high Q-tuned circuits, an inductor is placed in series with the resistor to increase the source impedance of the control voltage so as not to load the tuned circuit and decrease its Q. A second circuit using two back-to-back -back series connected varicap diodes is another common configuration. The second varicap effectively replaces the blocking capacitor in the first circuit. This reduces the overall capacitance and the capacitance range by half, but possesses the advantage of reducing the AC component of voltage across each device and symmetrical distortion should the AC component possess enough amplitude to bias the varicaps into forward conduction. When designing tuning circuits with varicaps it is usually good practice to maintain the AC component of voltage across the varicap at a minimal level, usually less than 100 mV peak to peak, to prevent this changing the capacitance of the diode too much and thus distorting the signal and adding harmonics to it. One remaining circuit, right, depicts two series connected varicaps being used in a circuit with separate DC and AC signal ground connections. 
the DC ground being depicted as the traditional ground symbol, and the AC ground being depicted as a triangle. Separation of grounds is often done to prevent high-frequency radiation from the low-frequency ground node or DC currents in the AC ground node, upsetting biasing and operating points of active devices such as vary caps and transistors. These circuit configurations are quite common in television tuners and electronically tuned broadcast AM and FM receivers, as well as other communications equipment and industrial equipment. Early varicap diodes usually required a reverse voltage range of 0 to 33V to obtain capacitance range, which was quite small, approximately 1 to 10 picofarads. These types were and are still extensively used in television tuners, whose high carrier frequencies require only small changes in capacitance. In time, varicap diodes were developed which exhibited very large capacitance ranges, 100 to 500 picofarads, with relatively small changes in reverse bias. 0 to 5 or 0 to 12 V. These newer devices allow electronically tuned and broadcast receivers to be realized as well as a multitude of other functions requiring large capacitance changes at lower frequencies, generally below 10 MHz. Some of designs of electronic security tag readers used in retail outlets require these high capacitance vary caps in their voltage controlled oscillators. The three leaded devices depicted at the top of the page are generally two common cathode-connected vary caps in a single package. In the consumer AM, FM tuner depicted at the right, a single dual package varicap diode adjusts both the passband of the tank circuit and the local oscillator with a single varicap for each. This is done to keep costs down. Two dual packages could have been used, one for the tank and one for the oscillator, four diodes in all. And this was what was depicted in the application data for the LA1851NAM radio chip. Two lower capacitance dual varactors are used in the FM section which operates at a frequency about 100 times greater and are highlighted by red arrows. In this case four diodes are used, one dual package each for the tank, band pass filter and the local oscillator, switching special types of varicap diode exhibiting an abrupt change in capacitance can often be found in consumer equipment such as television, tuners, which are used to switch radio frequency signal paths. When in the high capacitance state, usually with low or no bias, they present a low impedance path to RF, whereas when reverse bias their capacitance abruptly decreases and their RF impedance increases. Although they are still slightly conductive to the RF path, the attenuation they introduce decreases the unwanted signal to an acceptably low level. They are often used in pairs to switch between two different RF sources such as the VHF and UHF bands in a television tuner by supplying them with complementary bias voltages. The fourth device from the left in the picture at the head of this page is one such device. Harmonic multiplication. In some applications, such as harmonic multiplication, a large signal amplitude AC voltage is applied across a varicap to deliberately vary the capacitance at signal rate and generate higher harmonics, which are filtered off and used further down the signal chain. This happens because when the capacitance of a charged capacitor is reduced, the voltage across it is increased which in turn further reduces the capacitance if it is a varicap. The energy stored on a charged capacitor is given by E equals C V2 halves thus if E is constant, but C is reduced then V must increase. Thus if a sine wave of sufficient amplitude is applied across a varicap it gets peaked into a more triangular shape, and odd harmonics are generated. This was one early method used to generate microwave frequencies of moderate power, 1 to 2 GHz at 1 to 5 watts, from about 20 watts at a frequency of 3 to 400 MHz before adequate transistors had been developed to operate at this higher frequency. This technique is still used to generate much higher frequencies, in the 100 GHz to 1 terahertz range where even the fastest gas transistors are still inadequate.
substitutes for varicap diodes. Experimentation with the varicap effect need not remain in the realms of advanced electronics or solid-state physics labs. All semiconductor junction devices exhibit the effect, some to a surprising degree. Although many common devices exhibit the effect, they are not designed for that purpose so the effect can vary widely between one batch of a certain device and another. The Philips Bar 102 varicap and a common rectifier diode, the 1N5408, exhibit similar changes in junction capacitance with the exception that the bar 102 possesses a specified set of characteristics in relation to junction capacitance and the Q of the 1N5408 is less. However, individual 1N5408s can be tested for their suitability for use as vary caps prior to insertion into a circuit. Both the specific devices exhibit a reduction in capacitance from around 110 picofarads at 0 V bias to 60 picofarads at 5 V bias. This is almost a halving in capacitance, allowing construction of a VCO which is adjustable over a full octave of frequency. The voltage capacitance relationship of the 1N5408 is quite different from that of the bar 102, and it is quite easy to forward bias the 1N5408. So the amplitude of the applied AC must be maintained below 200 mV peak. Placing multiple devices in parallel will multiply the effect by the number of devices used. So three 1N5408s will vary in total capacitance from around 180 picofarads at 5V bias to 330 picofarads at 0V bias. Popular makeshift vary caps include LEDs, 1N400X series rectifier diodes. Schottky rectifiers and various transistors used with their collector base junctions reverse biased, particularly the 2N2222 and BC547. Reverse biasing the emitter base junctions of transistors also is quite effective as long as the AC amplitude remains small. Higher current devices with greater junction area tend to possess higher capacitance. Before the development of the varicip, Motor-driven variable capacitors or saturable core reactors were used as electrically controllable reactances in the VCOs and filters of equipment, like World War II German spectrum analyzers.